Today's lesson brings Larry South to a small reservoir near Texarkana, Texas. Top water fishing can be both exciting and frustrating. Let's join Larry as he shares some of his secrets in today's lesson, Top Water Grass and Pad Action. I did something there that uh, a lot of times will cause you to miss the fish. Jerk too fast. You know, so many of our lakes, I don't care whether they're big man-made lakes or small reservoirs, they have a lot of this, this underwater vegetation. And, you know, the way I do that grass is I kind of read it like I would a, a shoreline. You try to try to see where it's real tall like that and then follow the, just follow the, follow the edges of it just like you would a bank. I mean, that's, won't even let me talk. Baby bass. Just follow them edges of that uh, of them grass lines, and just kind of make your casts accordingly, and follow it, and just pitch down the edge of it. And because so many times, I mean, the bass use them; they use them edges just like uh, uh, like their highways. If you don't follow that edge, you know, I've always said edge is the whole key to bass fishing. When fishing visible underwater vegetation, try to find the edge and follow it, working the edge thoroughly with your bait. Remember, edges are the key to bass fishing. Buried up in them weeds on me. That's another good one on that. Yeah, you got that old dark, weedy tan. Been under that heavy grass. That's the kind that comes up and meets that popping frog. And now, here's another important Nixon note, courtesy of Mustad, makers of the revolutionary new triple grip treble hook. Anytime that you're crankbait fishing and you're having a problem hooking fish, maybe they're pushing it at you, hitting it from the side, and just not taking the bait right. Cold water, that is a time when that is a big problem. They just don't get it in their mouth good. If you'll remove the back hook from your crankbait, take that little small treble off and put on a treble hook that's got a little more shank on it. Now don't get a hook that's big and heavy and messes up the action of your crankbait. Just a little bit longer shank gives you a little more reach and a lot of times when he comes up there and nips at the back end of it, he'll catch one of them hooks and you'll land him. <laughs> Better than most. He was a wild man too. Bad. Ouch. Got him on a trailer hook. Come out of the shade. You know, that's one thing that you got to watch for is, is you learn more about fishing and you get better. A lot of times the whole key would be following the shade. Sun gets straight up, fish quit biting. And then when it starts settling down, getting behind the trees, just move over to the shady bank. Not always the answer, but it can be. So much of topwater fishing depends on the time of day and the conditions that you've got. And one thing that I found in a lot of lakes is if you've got a lot of shallow water, if the lake that you're fishing is basically all shallow and slightly off-colored, 
you're subject to catch bass on a topwater plug all day long, so don't be afraid to throw it. Now, clear water lakes, that's a totally different story because it, uh, it may be just one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening and the rest of the, the, rest of the day you're wasting your time unless they're busting the surface on shad. Now, if they're schooling on shad, then you can catch them on top. When fishing topwater baits, time of day can be one of the most important keys. In shallow water lakes with slightly off-colored water, you may catch fish on topwater all day long. However, in clear water lakes, you may only catch fish on topwater for a brief period in the early morning and again in the late afternoon. Jaws. He is a pretty good one. I thought you was a moose when you come up and got my frog. Not too bad. Ah, he was right down in the heavy lilies. Come right out of a little hole in the lily pad. Now see, I, I think that is the kind of stuff that a lot of bass get in, and you can't catch them. I mean, they just go back in that stuff and bury up back in there, and until they're ready to eat and come out, you just can't hardly catch them. They're extremely hard to fish because it makes such a solid mat on the surface. I believe I have people ask me that question about as much as any question that I get asked, is how do you fish heavy mats of lily pads? And the only thing you can do is throw a popping frog or a rat or a, a spoon and do the best you can to get it in what little holes that you can get it in. Because it's like, if you tried to flip all that, it's like flipping a jungle. You know, if it had a definite edge and isolated pads, isolated little clumps, now you can flip that. But when you take a sea of lilies like that, that is an extremely hard place to fish. The only thing you can do is work the edges and cast over into any little holes that you can see and use a real weedless bait and keep your fingers crossed. You know, there is an allure that has treble hooks on it that can be fished around this type of stuff. I mean, you've got to have a weedless bait. and be bad around here. We're gonna have to make a move here pretty shortly. A nice thunder boomer fixing to come in. Had the fish are biting good for a few minutes and then bam, they just quit. Well, folks, 
It's here and we gotta go. It's a bad one, about to blow me off the deck of this boat. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. Come back and see me again next week. I'll teach you how to be a better bass fisherman. <laughs>